you ask me, what is the most misunderstood area of a website? Without a doubt, I would tell you it's hosting. Hosting is something that every single website needs, yet there are very, very few people out there that actually understand the difference between good quality hosting and just your regular budget hosting. In today's episode, I've brought Braden, who's the technical officer at Trading Web Guys, onto the show because he's going to answer some questions around what quality hosting is and what are some of the features that quality hosting also has so that when you're looking at getting a provider, you know what you're looking for, you know some of the questions that you should be asking, and you know a little bit more than you should when it comes to being dangerous. So enjoy the show. We're doing our very best here to make a complete completely unsexy topic, kind of sexy. So enjoy this episode on hosting. Giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Hello and welcome back to Toolbox Talks. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about something that may not sound overly sexy. Um, However, it's kind of important. Where your website lives is one of the most important elements of the website's performance. So today we're going to talk about hosting. Now, to strengthen this discussion, I've brought uh, the CTO of Trading Web Guys and the Site Shed, Braden, into the conversation. Braden's a bit of a tech whiz, and he's pretty much the backbone of the technical side of both of those companies. Uh, what he says pretty much goes in that regard. So Braden, welcome to the microphone. Thanks for having me, Matt. It's good to be here. This is the first podcast we've done. I can't believe that. It is. It is. I've been watching you record them, but uh, it's taken this long for you to invite me on the show. So <laughs> I feel privileged. <laughs> so, Braden, I've invited you on the show today. Um, obviously, I, I want to talk about not specifically the hosting services that we provide, but I want to talk about hosting in general because um, a lot of people, I won't say they, they um, we get reject uh, resistance on it, but I think there's a bit of a myth out there when it comes to hosting and what it actually mm. is, what it's designed to deliver. And then what the difference is between you know a good hosting provider and a poor hosting provider? I know you know the platform that we that we've sort of developed over over the last year or so is is pretty much as far as I can see up there with the best available. But you know we still get those people comparing us to you know your, your budget style hosting providers. So if you don't mind, I just want to run through a few. I suppose I've got a few questions I want to throw at you that maybe you can answer just to just to give some um, insight back to the to the listeners. I mean I, I know. Um, when we're talking, um, what actually we're talking about hosting? What actually is hosting? Yeah, well, look, good question to start with. I mean, hosting is uh, when you've got a website of any kind, you need to host it somewhere. So it's kind of like the home for your website. So technically speaking, without trying to get too technical, it just sits on a computer that's on an always-on internet connection. And every time somebody types in, you know, tradywebguys.com.au, it goes and it hits that computer and it goes, okay, what's the website? Show it to me. And then that always-on computer spits back all the information that you see and then you get presented with the website that is Trady Web Guys or your website or whatever website you've typed in. Okay. So that's that's kind of what it is. So one of the analogies I like to use when I speak to people is your hosting is like your street address, whereas your URL or your www.yourcompany.com.au is like the actual house. So the house lives on the street address and that street address is your hosting. Is that yeah. pretty accurate? That's- that's, that's a pretty accurate analogy, yeah. Yeah, I think most builders would uh, would, would <laughs> resonate with that analogy. This is true. So I suppose some of the let, – let's talk firstly about some of the pain points and some of the problems that poor hosting might deliver to, to a customer or to a website. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, look, the thing with hosting is that – there's a vast range of, of prices out there. You can get hosting like really, really cheap, sometimes as low as like 50 cents or, or a dollar per month. But you, especially when it comes to hosting, you usually get what you pay for. And so when you go with those cheaper services like you know GoDaddy or HostGator or whatever, you're, share, you're on a shared platform, which means that when I was talking about having that always on computer with an always on internet connection, you're sharing that with a lot of people. Now, because computers are really smart, there's no uh, hard limit to the amount of people you can share that with. So you might be sharing that one computer with a thousand or ten thousand other people. And so having those cheap uh, providers is good because it's cheap, but it also impacts your website because of a, a number of reasons. And those reasons usually are, you know, speed. What happens is when you're sharing it with a thousand or ten thousand people. Imagine you're sharing your home with ten thousand people. You know, you're not going to be able to get to the kitchen very fast because you don't have to keep pushing through all these other people to get there. And um, 
And so when you're sharing with a lot of people, you know, it's obviously going to slow down your performance. Now, sometimes if all those people are sleeping, it might be really easy to, you know, get to the kitchen really fast. And so your website will load fast. And sometimes when they're all awake and busy and trying to make sandwiches, you know, it's going to be quite difficult to get to the kitchen fast because they're all there. So that impacts on your speed. And so speed is probably one of the biggest things when it comes to, you know, errors in hosting. Yep. And so speed is one of those things as well. Like when we when we work with um, when we're working with our customers, we're always trying to make sure that you know we're improving things like their their search engine optimization. And speed is actually one of the you know the critical elements in search engine optimization because um, having a slow loading website uh, reflects user experience, which also reflects your SEO ranking. So mm. that's one of the main reasons, isn't it, that we like to have our websites, you know, running fast it's because they, um, it, it affects the SEO ranking, it improves user experience. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, SEO and, and user experience are very closely tied because if you load a website on your phone or on your computer and you're sitting there 15 or 20 seconds before something shows up, most people aren't going to sit that long. Most people, you've usually got three to five seconds, especially the younger ones. The younger people are usually the more impatient they are. And so if you if your website doesn't load at least majority of your content within three seconds, then they're just going to close out or they're going to go back to Google and then they're going to click on something else. So that's why Google generally downranks you with a slow website because it knows that even if it were to put you at the top, even if you've got good content, if your website's slow, people are just going to click back. And so Google doesn't want to give people a bad experience. So unfortunately, you get downranked if your website's slow. Yeah, right. So can you have a website that doesn't have host hosting? No, not so, really. It has to be hosted somewhere. Yeah. Some people back in olden days used to host it on their own internet connection and they'd have like a little server or something or other sitting in the back office. But nowadays, it's not really worth it because, you know, if you, that internet connection goes down, and I mean, the price of hosting has come down dramatically. I mean, where you used to be paying, you know, sometimes a thousand bucks a month for hosting, you know, back 10 years ago. Nowadays, you can get a pretty good, pretty reliable host uh, for about 50 to 100 bucks a month. Yeah. So, um, with that in mind, let's talk about, I suppose, the like the, the update aspect of hosting. So, you know, when you've got a website that's being hosted um, by a provider, what are some of the fundamental features that should be involved uh, within that package? Yeah. Okay. So, look, when you do have a website hosted with somebody, with those cheap providers, you've only got basically website hosting and there may be a little bit of support, but you usually have to, you know, kind of wait in, a, in an online queue or wait on the phone for 20 minutes until you get to talk to somebody. So in terms of a, a good hosting, what you want to do is make sure that not only is it fast and usually local is better too. So having it inside Australia is, is usually quite helpful, not necessary, but quite helpful in terms of speed. When you um, say that, what do you mean inside Australia? Just for so the listeners. The computer that's sitting always on with the internet connection that's always on, if that is inside of Australia, then the speeds are going to be faster to load in most cases. And so it is something that you want to be mindful of is making sure that it's either inside Australia or in a country that's very close to Australia so that when we go to load the website, we're not impacted by other people. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. If you've got a web hosting company in America, then when the load between America and Australia is quite high. So when everybody's accessing stuff in America, like Netflix, for example, or whatever, at, at eight o'clock at night, then your website is impacted, even though it's not a direct impact, it's an indirect impact. Because when you're trying to access the website, because everybody's accessing stuff through that pipe that goes between Australia and the United States, you know, you become, you're slowed down, unfortunately, because everybody's trying to access you know, everybody's, everybody's trying to go through the one pipe. So by having it in Australia, you kind of eliminate that, that pipe bandwidth issue. So you don't have the, you know, the yeah. requirement to go through that pipe. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Say, I mean, why would I not just put a, a computer in my office and host my website on that? Like, what is the advantage of, I mean, th let's talk about, I suppose, you, you know, why, why would we go with a hosting provider if potentially we can just run it off a computer in our office? <laughs> That's a good question. So, um, main thing is speed. Usually, especially in Australia's internet connection, the speeds that we have in our houses are not fast enough for uploads. So, when you are accessing a website somewhere else, you, they're uploading it and you're downloading it. So, our download speeds are usually relatively good in Australia. When you're hosting a website yourself, you're using upload speed because somebody else is accessing it. So, you have to upload it into the internet and they then download it. And so, majority of 
houses using like your stock standard ADSL or your Telstra cable, the upload speeds are really, really slow. And so by comparison, and so it's not worth hosting it because your website will then become slow. And honestly, the performance of a, an overseas cheap provider is that going to be better than hosting it yourself in most cases. Right. And what about, I suppose, you know, when you're using a, uh, a hosting provider that has multiple servers or multiple storage facilities, as opposed to having, you know, one single storage facility within your office, for example, I'm guessing that you're sort of hedging your bets there in the event that potentially one of those servers may have an issue or a security problem or whatever it is, then there's, there's other options available. Yeah, well, that's that's a good point too. And redundancy is what we call that. So if you've got, uh, if you're using a hosting provider, most of them will have some form of redundant system. So there's a lot of, it's not as simple as having, you know, one cable between, you know, two computers and plugging it in. There's a whole lot of technical stuff, including, you know, networking switches and, and load balances, etc. And so all of those things are like, um, there's like usually between three and five different devices before it gets to the computer. And so all of those things, you know, with a hosting provider are all redundant. Whereas if you were to host it yourself or in your own office, you most likely don't have a redundant modem. So if your modem breaks, then you know you you kind of stuffed because you have to go go get a new modem and your website's down until you get a new modem set up and running correctly again. Right. Okay. So it's yeah. so that basically, I mean, is, is this what we refer to when we're talking about you know things like cloud hosting? Is that basically is that basically uh, having redundant systems in place? Yeah. Usually when the term cloud is used correctly. That just means, you know, there's there's redundant systems. And so if that modem or, you know, that computer dies, it automatically will fail over to another modem or another computer, um, usually without any downtime or sometimes, you know, like milliseconds worth of downtime, you know, maybe one second max downtime okay. as it's switching over. Yeah, right. So moving along, what's what is managed hosting? Good question. So managed hosting is kind of your normal hosting whereby somebody else manages it. And so it can come in many different kind of forms, but I guess it's kind of like having a service department where they'll come and clean up everything for you and, you know, make your bed and do the cleaning, etc. So if you've got a managed hosting with, um, we'll just rewind for a second, with a website, it's not as simple as just building it and then leaving it because what happens is as time goes on, and we all know that technology updates really, really fast. So as time goes on, vulnerabilities are found in, you know, your website that's been built and they need to be updated. So if you don't have managed hosting and most of your cheap providers aren't managed, then the updates to the server and the updates to your website don't happen. And so what will happen is you will most likely get hacked within a year or two. And we see that quite often at, at Trady Web Guys is, you know, somebody will come to us with an existing website that's either been hacked or, you know, looks like it's about to be hacked because it, they haven't updated it in a year or two or three. And so with three-year-old technology, unless it's been updated, it's, it's going to be hacked. So by having managed hosting, you've actually got somebody or, you know, or a team of people usually that look after that. So they make sure the server's up to date. They do all of the updates on the server. And what I mean by that is kind of like, you know, if you've got a Windows or a Mac computer doing the updates for that. So they do that. And then also with whatever content management system or website that you've got, they also do those updates usually. So they'll update WordPress for you. They'll update all the plugins. They'll update all the themes. They'll make sure that any code that was custom written is, is up to date to the latest security standards to make sure that your website does doesn't get hacked and, and isn't vulnerable to other people. So from a security point of view, Braden, is that is that the main issue with websites getting getting hacked or malware? Is it the fact that they're running versions that have been uh, that are, have been superseded? Yeah, usually that's most of the problem I see. And it's also most of the problem when I when we talk to people about WordPress, because we use WordPress at Trady Web Guys and, and most other companies I've worked with that are web development use WordPress. And some people have had a bad experience with WordPress. And usually that's because, you know, they were kind of given a website and then they put it on a, an unmanaged provider. And, and half the time that's because they didn't know any better. And so they thought, well, hey, I built the website kind of like building a home, you know, it should stay standing for a little bit. But unfortunately, with technology, it's not as simple as, you know, building something and, and leaving it. You've got to actually constantly maintain it or else you know it will fall down and it will be hacked and, and broken into I know, I know at times platforms like WordPress and some of the plugins you know they, they can update sometimes two to three times a month mm. um, 
I mean, that's that's a lot of work to get in there and manually update it. Is that one of the main? I suppose that's one of the main advantages of you know, having a managed um, hosting provider. They get in there and do all that for you, and you haven't got to worry about it. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. I mean, having somebody do that kind of takes uh, a lot of headache out of it because you know you don't have to go in there and update all the time. And yeah, and yeah, they can often the good plugins and the good themes and the good content management systems like WordPress do update sometimes two or three times a month, and and that's usually a combination of necessity and an update. So so it's not just giving you more features, but most of the time there is also also security improvements in there to make sure that you know new vulnerabilities and, and new places where people have broken into in the past or you know they've found they actually patch those to make sure that nobody can get in to keep your website safe and secure. So if I'm a on a slight segue, I mean I'm a I'm a I'm a builder. I live in Melbourne. Why would somebody? I mean, why would my website be a, a security risk? Like, who would want to hack it? Yeah, look, good question. And I mean, uh, I have this question with passwords as well. It's like, well, who would want to hack it? And it's like, usually it's not, when it comes to hacking, it's not some particular person that's gone, right, okay, Matt Jones, I'm going to hack you because I feel like hacking you. That's not usually how it works. It's usually somebody that either wants your hosting to be able to do other things like spam other people or, or put links on Facebook or stuff like that, or they want to be able to just spam their own website on your website. And so what they do is they usually, like I said, it's not a person to person thing. It's not a, okay, I'm going to hack this website. I'm sitting down and writing code to hack it. It's normally just a, a script that scans all the websites that it can find. And if your website it can find in Google, then chances are it'll find it and it'll scan it for vulnerabilities. And if it finds a, a security risk hole, then it will usually, you know, in some code. And so then you'll quite often see on hacked websites, sometimes there's little links down the bottom that look like they're out of place or, you know, there's little um, pop-ups that are... Viagra. Yeah, exactly. By Viagra pop-ups or, you know, in, in larger penis here pop-ups that, that aren't supposed to be there. But what's happened is somebody's script has found a vulnerability because they haven't updated their website and they've gone, okay, right, I'm just going to put this in there. And and usually with those, you know, by Viagra ones, they've just used an affiliate link. So it means that every time somebody does click on it, you know, they get a little bit of money. And so when you run this script and you inject this code into, you know, 20, 30,000 websites across the bazillions of websites in the world, chances are you're going to get a few clicks and a few purchases. And so that's why they do it. And that's why they make money because, you know, they can use their affiliate links to make some money. It's it's really got nothing to do with targeting your individual business. Yeah. Okay. Look, moving along, let's talk about backups. So mm -hmm. when your website's hosted, why is it critical to run backups on it? Mainly for the reasons that we've just talked about, because if somebody does get in, uh, I mean, no no system is 100% secure. No. I mean, they're, they're pretty close, but uh, most of the ones nowadays, because they patch them so constantly to make sure that they're up to date, but they're not 100% secure. So having backups is is definitely a must have for that reason, that if you do get hacked, it's very easy for whoever to click a button and go, okay, you know, restore that backups and then we can patch the hole. So quite often we'll get somebody that comes to us with a hacked website because you know they didn't use our hosting or you know they've been with a they got it built by somebody else and it's hosted on a separate provider. And so we'll have to go and find the latest backup. Sometimes you know they won't have done a backup for six to twelve months and so the backup is outdated, which means that you know all the new content that they've put on their website is is irrelevant. And so when we restore from their backup, they still have to go through and update all the content again. So that can be a pain. But having yep. regular backups just means that if somebody were to break in, we can restore from it. It also means that a lot of the websites that we build for our customers, uh, Trady Web Guys, we give them the ability to edit things. So you need to make sure you have backups just in case you know you click the wrong button or you accidentally delete something. Because we maintain regular backups, it's very easy for us to go, okay, no worries, John, we'll just restore it from a backup. And within 30 seconds, you know, you've undone the accidental deletion. But if yep. you don't have a backup, obviously, that can be quite difficult. Yeah, okay. Awesome. All right. So um, I know we sort of touched on a little bit before. We we're talking about load time for websites. Mm -hmm. So apart from the fact that you know we've we've spoken about uh, we've spoken about user experience. Are there other elements that that load time can affect affect a website? And I suppose more to the point, how how can you improve load time? Like what what actually makes them run quicker? Mm, good question. So load time is obviously, you know, when you load a website, you know, how long it takes to load. And we, as you said, we did touch on it before. We did touch on the fact that if you load a website and it takes longer than 15 seconds, you know, you're likely to click back. So, you know, that's the user experience, user interaction. And as I mentioned also before, you know, SEO. So places like Google and then Bing and, and other search engines are not going to rank you highly if you've got a low load time. 
and that is because it affects which kind of goes from user experience to user behavior. If Even if you get on a website and the front page loads quickly, if you go to click on another page like the About Us page and it takes 10 to 15 seconds to load, it's still going to affect users' behavior. They're either not going to click on that page and go back to the home page and look for something else, or they're just going to exit your website because it's it's too difficult to deal with and too long to wait. So they're just going to going to leave. Yeah. I mean, this is one of the reasons, I, I, mean, I probably didn't have been told you this, but one of the reasons we've, I've sort of stopped um, putting rotating banners on the homepage of websites is for that reason you know we're rotating banners are loading images and images can depending on your on your the speed of your internet it can obviously slow down the uh, the load time so it's one of the reasons why we we we've sort of gone back to that static uh, homepage instead of the rotating banner style yeah exactly and i mean realistically banners look pretty but they don't do a whole lot to to like to to convert people to attract people to like people are not going to look at your website and go hey he's got a balance banner therefore I'm going to buy from you you know it's 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 nice to show off your work and banners do have a place but usually on the home page is the first thing you see it's not the greatest idea because of exactly that it's the load time it's the first impression you don't want people's first impression of your website to be 10 seconds of you know a blank page while it's loading the banner you want it to be you know bam this is who we are this is what we do this is why we do it yeah I think as well it's kind of it's a bit ignorant to expect people expect people to wait around to see your fifth slide like typically I don't really care they just want to see what it is you do and then if, if, if you can provide that service so yeah well exactly I mean putting a banner on like the our work page where people have actually clicked in because they want to see your work that is a smart thing to do but on your home page as you mentioned you know most people are going to be landing on your home page the first time so they're not going to really sit there and wait around for your banner to, to change so what are the things that can that can slow down a website so with uh, content management systems like WordPress um, you've got the plugins and the themes and and the images, so they'll slow it down. I'll talk more about them in a second. But also, no matter what website you have, you've also got the hosting specifications and and the sh- like, having a shared hosting. So, with regards to shared hosting and hosting specs, it's like having a fast computer. If you've got a super fast computer that you've just bought from, you know, who knows where, JB Hi-Fi, then it's going to run very fast. But if you've got, you know, one from your mum that she's had for fifty years, then maybe not that long, maybe only five years, but still, <laughs> it's going to run. Uh, it's going to run quite slow. So when you're hosted on a hosting platform, if the server is fast, then that's likely going to uh, improve your speed. But also, as I mentioned before, with shared hosting, sometimes you can be sharing it with, you know, 100, 1,000, 10,000 people. So uh, depending on how many people they've put on the server depends on, you know, the load time as well. So with regards to hosting, you've got to make sure you pick a hosting provider that doesn't oversell is is what we call it in the industry, which means that they, you know, put more people on a server than realistically should be. But also with regards to content management systems like WordPress, you want to make sure that you've got good quality plugins, good quality themes, and that your images are are compressed. Because what can often happen, and we see it with our clients all the time, is you'll take a photo on your iPhone and the photo looks really good. But if you upload that photo to your website and you don't compress it first, then that photo could be a five meg photo, which means that on the average Australian internet connection, that's going to take about five to 10 seconds to load. Yeah, which means right. that, you know, you've got to make sure that you're compressing those images so that when people load it, it only takes a, you know, a few seconds or less than a second rather than five to 10 seconds. Yeah, well, that's a whole nother, a whole nother podcast probably talking about, you know, the, I suppose, the features or things that you can do to improve load time. So maybe we'll maybe we'll talk on that in a in a follow up um, podcast. Yeah, it's so, a good idea. Um, how about we talk about um, just? I mean, wrapping up. I sort of, sort of want to tie this up now, but um, like maybe some. Uh, the, if we're going to compare apples to apples, so say we want to talk about you know a, a a really good hosting provider, a really good hosting service, then we want to compare that against one of the budget ones that you can you know have your website hosted for ten bucks a month, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What are we looking at? That is a good question. So, yeah, if we're comparing it, so the first thing you'd be looking at is, you know, budget. You get what you pay for, you know, not always. So, obviously, don't just buy a hosting provider because they're expensive. But, you know, usually when you're paying a little bit more for hosting, then that's going to be a little bit better than if you're paying cheap for hosting. Um, And you don't need to go over the top either. But, you know, again, if you buy a cheap $5 or $15 Android phone from Telstra versus buying an iPhone, chances are the quality of the phone calls and the way it works is going to be different because of, you know, that's the way things work. 
Um, also, with your budget providers, they're often overseas and they can often be either in the United States or in European countries. Germany is quite big on, on cheap hosting. And so, uh, where there's a, a, like a, a good fast provider will usually either be in Australia or Singapore or somewhere quite close by. You can get good providers in the United States, but again, because there's just so much coming out of the United States, I try and avoid hosting your website in the United States just because of that you know, pipe bandwidth issue between Australia and the US. But the pipe between us and Singapore doesn't tend to get overloaded very often at all. So Singapore is not a bad place to host, but usually Australia. And, and be mindful of a lot of Australian companies do still host their websites overseas. So make sure that just because they're an Australian-based hosting company doesn't mean that, and you're paying them and they've got an ABN, doesn't mean that they're using Australian-based hosting. Um, right. They might also be using overseas hosting. So that's something that you can usually find on their About Us page or, or if you ask them. So just be mindful of that. You don't, obviously, you know, most of our listeners out there are not going to be too savvy on computer specifications and how fast it is. But usually, if you just talk to them, talk to your hosting provider and see, you know, what kind of a hosting you're on, ask them, you know, are you on a shared platform, which you most probably will be, and ask them, you know, is it is it going to be fast enough for, you know, our customers? Are we going to be able to load fast? And they'll usually be able to help you out. Things to be mindful of, I guess, when comparing the two is is you want to make sure that it's managed properly. And this is something that, you know, we are getting a bit technical and it is quite difficult to, to kind of make sure that they are managed. But usually you can um, learn from people's reviews of the company. So if you type in their name in Google or, or type in their name followed by reviews, you'll usually find a review or two if they're a pretty big company. So making sure that they manage not only the updates of their server, but also the updates of, you know, your website if they're a managed provider, which obviously we talked about is, is a good thing to have. Um, and making sure that they're also responsive when it comes to support. You don't want to have a company where you're waiting an hour or two hours on hold while your website's down because A, you've got a, a company to get back to. You need to do your own work. You don't need to be waiting around for that to be fixed. But also B, you don't want to be have you know two or three hours of downtime if it could be solved in five minutes if you'd you know got a provider that'll respond pretty quickly. Yeah. So yeah. There's also a few things around firewall and security, but most uh, and updates and maintenance. But most um, most good providers will do all that for you. You can ask them a few questions, and if they sound like they know what they're talking about, then usually you're pretty safe. But yeah, I think we've covered kind of the basis of most of it there. Yeah, cool. Well, look, I think that we've pretty much covered off what I wanted to speak about. Is there anything else there that you think we've missed? No, I don't think so. I think that's that's covered most of hosting and how you can kind of tell the difference between the good ones and the bad ones. Yep. All right, cool. Well, look, I mean, how about we run through some takeaway points just for the just to summarize that um uh summarize that podcast. Mm -hmm. Um I suppose primarily, you know, make sure you you've got a fast your website's loading quickly. Uh what is quickly out of curiosity? Usually, like I said, you, you want to make sure that when you load the website, it loads within uh, the, at least most of what you see on the screen loads within three seconds. Yeah. Um, like at the very bottom of the page down in the footer, that doesn't have to load straight away because a user won't open your website and scroll straight to the footer. But as long as everything on the front home page opens in, within 30 seconds, and there are a few page speed tools out there. There's one by Google and there's one by Pingdom. So if you just type in, you know, page load time test, then you can find one of those in Google to test your your page load time. And just a side note on that, when you do when you are using those, make sure you tick the Australian server so that it's loading for Australia because chances are most of your customers are going to be inside Australia. Um, obviously, if, if you're running a company that has customers elsewhere, you want to make sure it's fast everywhere. But for most of our listeners, I feel that most of them are probably going to be either inside Australia or, you know, in your country. If you're listening to us from New Zealand, then make sure, you know, it loads fast in New Zealand or, or in the United States. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, you use a reliable and trustworthy company. That sort of goes without saying, I suppose, with, with, with anything. Um, yep. Managed updates that, I mean, you can't really put enough emphasis on the importance of keeping on top of you know running current versions of not only your cms but uh, sorry you, you like your wordpress your content management system and also the plugins that they're using mm. um that's probably the biggest step in keeping the, the website security safe backups so backups mm -hmm. paramount i mean i know we run daily weekly monthly um backups on the on the websites that we maintain and host so make sure your provider has a has a um something that enables you to be able to do that. Yeah, um, and with that, sorry, Matt, with backups, make sure that your provider also has either off-site or external backups. And ooh, yep. you should probably also make sure that you've got a copy yourself because what I've seen happen many times is the backups are stored on the same computer that, you know, or the same server. And so what happens is if that server's hard drive dies or whatever, you've lost all your backups and all of your live sites. So yep. make sure that those backups are external in some way and make sure there's some way for you to have your own copy of the server so that if for some reason reason the company goes belly up you've got a copy of your website you're not going to lose everything 
Yeah, I suppose that's like keeping a keeping your spare key on your key ring, isn't it? Yeah, you want to make sure you've got a spare key to get into the house because otherwise, <laughs> you know, if, if you lose all those keys, then uh, you're not getting into that house very easily. Yeah. Uh, training and support. So obviously, we put a lot of emphasis on teaching people, you know, how they can, our, our customers, how they can get in there and get their hands dirty with their website. So that's, I suppose that's kind of unique to the, to our pro, to our um, platform. However, um, you know, there probably are other providers that may offer something similar. I'm not even sure. Yeah, um, usually you've got a, like w- with the training, it's either if you've gone with a web development company that provides training, you know that's usually where they provide training and the hosting. Often hosting providers don't have a whole lot of training because sometimes you can just get a hosting provider that'll just host for you. And then obviously, as you mentioned, support. You want to make sure that support is is you know usable and and you know will work, and you're not waiting for five hours to get something done. And I suppose the the, the last thing would be to you know maybe invest in a company that is always evolving. You know, make sure they're they're using the, you know the most modern practices or they're they're constantly you know they're innovating and they're sort of sitting the on the, on the cutting edge of you know the technology that's available in that regard just so that you know you're not using dated systems dated processes and that kind mm. of stuff well there's definitely quite a lot of companies out there that have kind of started five or ten years ago and they've just got the same stuff from five or ten years ago and you know although it's still secure and it may not be as fast as it could be and yeah as you said you know they're, they're outdated they've got pretty non-standard non-modern practices so that can also affect you know your load times and your support and and if you need to move to another provider you know if they've got outdated stuff it, it's not as great cool well look i think that pretty much wraps it up um, what are you thinking? I'm thinking that's pretty good. Are you think we've done a good uh, job of helpful. making a totally unsexy topic pretty sexy? I'm hoping so. I'm hoping that we've made it as sexy as possible because hosting really is not sexy. But <laughs> uh, I'm hoping the listeners out there have been able to get some good information and advice and uh, get their website sorted. All right. Awesome. Well, mate, thanks for your time. Um, I'll let you get back to it. And uh, that is a wrap. <laughs> So if you haven't already, head across to the SiteShed.com and register for our Toolbox Talks where you'll be regularly sent great episodes just like this straight to your inbox so you'll never miss one. Uh, If you want to join the community, you can head across to the SiteShed.com forward slash members where for a small monthly fee, you'll get access to regularly updated training material as well as access to our forum where you can mingle and collaborate with trade-based business owners just like you from all over the world. If you're enjoying this podcast, please head across to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. We greatly appreciate it, and it helps us spread the word and reach the masses. Likewise, if you know anyone that might benefit from the content we create, then please go ahead and share this with them. You've been listening to Toolbox Talks by The Site Shed. For more great content just like this, head across to thesiteshed.com and join the amazing community of savvy trade-based business owners.